Okay, just to keep the drums uh, settled there for a bit. Okay, Richard, your thoughts on the guitar? That was, that was really good. I thought um, it was really good. Well done. The key thing about that, though, was just communication again. Head down, you know, you do a mirror image of John Greenwood. Yeah, you know, just favorite. head down, you know, the, Johnny. You know, behind, your, behind your hair. Um, otherwise, I thought your solo was great, and the great thing about your solo was that it outlined the chords, which was really cool, and it's the first time I've heard that today, where you were playing lines that went to something rhythmic on the second or third bar when you play something. And you also had an element, which I haven't seen in any of you yet, which is call and response. That you were, whether you knew it or not, you were responding to yourself. So you were playing something rhythmically with a, me with a melody, which had lots of rhythm in it, and then you were moving to the next chord. So not only did you apply it to the chords you were playing over, plus you were doing a natural call and response by doing that, which was cool, which is all what rock and roll is about, you know, slave thing, da 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 you had that naturally, so that was really, really good. So, the only thing about communication, which I'll just give a pass, was just, there wasn't any, um, but actually it didn't really affect, um, you were very assured of what you were playing, you know, you knew your parts, um, so in terms of accuracy, um, you know, I'd give you a merit for that, because you played all the bits pretty much where they should have been, um, and the musicality of it was, was also merit too, and it, was, it, it worked, you know, it, it worked really, um, you know, the musicality comes under your solo, which I was impressed with, because it fitted in the genre, and did all the things that I would expect a solo in that genre to do. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, let's go to uh, Duncan first this time. On the spot. Chris. 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 Francis. Okay. Uh, as I said just now, individually you all knew your parts quite well, which showed that's great. It meant things could chug along quite happily, even though the communication wasn't brilliant. You were all quite safe going along from there. Um, bass part, pretty accurate. Um, ruined by a few little things. Um, tuning. It's not very, I know it's a college base. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's gaffer tape on the tune as well. Um, would have been much nicer if it was more in tune. Um, I'm not a great stickler for these things, but it would have helped. Um, and I heard a couple of times when I wanted to hear the bottom E string, I could hear the G string as well. So a few tidiness things there really, really some of the impact. Um, you had fun with the solo, just do you feel about that. Plectrum was a good choice for this one, gives you a nice punchy sound, so that was good. 
So yeah, overall I'd say, I'd say uh, the past with bits of merit, but the tuning got me, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, also, if you if you are gonna, you know, do the playthroughs, then maybe use somebody who's got a decent base that they're willing to lend it to. Those are fine for the practice rooms, but if you're gonna do a gig, I mean. I'd be worried if I went out and gigged on that thing. I'd be really worried. I wouldn't sleep the night before. I really wouldn't. Um, uh, okay, good. Uh, thank you. Uh, Rob. Um, Sam. Yeah. Yo. Sam. Tra traditional grip. I like, it. I like it. Are you doing it just for this piece? No, or I do all the time. You I use all the time? Like just like me. Yeah, okay, good. Well, I thought I'd ask. Sometimes some drummers do it because... If it's suddenly a jazz or a rock and roll thing, they might change their grip. So okay, yeah, that's well, fine. So you're yeah. confident playing to restrict grip? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought you tried to communicate with the rest of the guys. You were looking between you and the guitarist. You were looking. Yeah. I think that was good. Um, uh, maybe just a bit more would have been good. Um, I think with experience, you get to know how your drumming can be as insistent as a stare eventually. And in lessons, when we, you know, lessons well. Explain to you how it can work. Um, but I thought that was really good actually, I was, I was quite impressed. You were really trying hard. I think because other people are saying it, other drummers now, everyone else is going to be looking all the time. But um, but yeah, so that, I thought that was really good. So I'll say Merit, but he did try really hard. Um, and so, and Merit again for the arrangement, because like, you can't knock it. You start and stop at the right time. Um, the fills were good. Uh, they were quite imaginative, they were quite open. The second fill in that eight bar sequence was really nice. Loads of space, but that, boom. It's quite nice. It's quite musical. It's like a, almost like double stops for a guitar going bang, bang, ding, 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 ding. ding. Yeah, it's just quite cool. I like that. Um, uh, and musicality, um, a bit of a, a drip in, a drop in drip, drop even in tempo a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if that's just confidence or if you started listening to the other guys, think, oh, maybe I'm too fast or they're too slow. Um, uh, yeah, if you could, we've got it on video, you could probably go back and see it. Um, but yeah, so I can't give you merit for that, just for that reason, because it can get drop in a little bit. I think with all the drummers, it's a consistency of timekeeping once you're there. Your counting was very strong. I forgot to mention about the other two, actually. Your counting was very strong at the beginning for all the drummers, actually. I should mention that, because um, things can go sadly lacking when the drummers very sort of... Like, all of you have been like, well, here we are, we're off, you know. I stake my claim, mm. off we go. Well done for following that advice from last week. Because it, you know, it does make a difference. Um, it's not just about saying numbers and then coming in anyway. You've got to feel the tempo before you say the numbers, isn't it, really? Exactly. And I mean, even if we said mm. earlier, if they're slightly wrong, the tempo is slightly wrong, someone will tell you, you can sort that afterwards. But if you start strong, by the time you've got to your second, third and fourth click, if you're in 4-4, four, four, obviously, yeah. um, the rest of the band are already in that shape already and they're already set to go. Cool. So sometimes when you're on that plane, just, you just keep going. But... Cool. Yeah, uh, a merit, I think, for the, to say, for the accuracy. Yeah, good. Pass yeah. Well, well listened to the advice from last week. That's really cool. Um, Aaron, uh, right, any comments about Aaron, the piano part? Um, Matty? Um, is the volume turned all the way up? No. Uh, um, a bit more volume. I, I, could, I could hear you on the beginning and the end, um, but like not in between, if you get what I mean. Um, do I have to give the grades as well? Uh, no, 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 that's fine. Um, but apart from that, he was pretty good, really. Uh, he was very musical in what you what you played. So, uh, but that, yeah, the on occasion, uh, you couldn't really hear you. It could just be me, but I thought it was really good. So, cool. Yeah, well done. Yeah, nice. Um, I, I th thought the, um, there was some good accuracy in, in some of the bits that you did. Um, and then some other times you sort of like got halfway through the lick and then stopped. Um, you've really got to be fluent on your blues licks. Because there's one of the few things, like in jazz you can make mistakes and kind of get away with it. In blues, you just got to keep it flowing, you know. It's like a conversation from your heart, you know, your heart doesn't make mistakes really. And when it talks so you've got to kind of that's the thing of the way I look at blues um, so really work on the accuracy but yeah the musicality as uh, as Matty says you know was really nice uh, perhaps a bit more communication really listen to what was going on um, but the fact that you did uh, when you made a mistake you you didn't kind of like you know just carry on and just keep banging anything you did actually kind of get back in it didn't phase you 
And, you know, I know sometimes when you look at these, you make a mistake and you look at it, you've got all these keys in front of you. It's like being on the 747 flight deck and it can seem a bit uh, panicky, but you didn't get panicked. You just kept calm and you kept going and you, you kept the structure right. So um, keep the accuracy there. Um, yeah, I was at the moment demonstrating merit for musicality is really nice. Accuracy, okay, you made a few stops, maybe pass stroke merit, and then communication, you need to demonstrate a bit more of that, maybe with another piece you can, and I'll give you a, a sort of pass uh, for that. But very musical, and that's the most important thing, so well done. Good. Um, 